if you have kids and you're financially struggling, I'm not saying congratulations because what am I congratulating? You bringing the kid into a world just to have them living in poverty? Of course, people don't want children. One of the reasons why finances. How can anyone afford this? People are working 8 to 12 hours a day. They want to come home. They want to relax. Then they have to take care of a child who is crying. And then they have to pay for it. It's insane amount of money. The average cost for a child is between 16,000 to 18,000 a year. Like yearly. So you add it up 20 times. Because let's say your child leaves when they are 20. I mean, in a good case, then it comes out to $360,000. Huh? I genuinely will never understand how some people can give birth to multiple children when they know they can't afford it. I say this respectfully, because hear me out. It's one thing if you have one or two by accident, life happens. We can't control that. But what we can control is after the third, fourth, fifth child, at that point, you are more than well aware of how much a child costs and the financial burdens of it. I want multiple children too, but I know that I can't afford it right now. So I would never put my child in a situation where they have to live a hard life because of choices I made. would never want to do that because I have been there as a child. I didn't live a very good life. I don't want to do the same thing my parents did. Worst thing you can do to a child is literally not give them a good life. That is literally a form of neglect. If you're going to have the child be able to support them financially, um, have a roof over their head and food on the table. If you can't do that, then maybe it's not wise to have the third, fourth, or fifth child. Like I said, one or two, I understand. Things happen, life happens. Unforeseen circumstances happen. But after the third, fourth, and fifth one, like, you're aware at that point. And if you're going to have a child when you know you can't afford it, you're just going to give them a hard life, which I don't think is fair to the child because they did not choose to be born. But you chose to have another child when you knew you couldn't afford it. That's just my take on it. Do not take this offensively, guys. I'm literally just giving my opinion. Feel free to give yours, but it's, it's just the truth. This is also a problem. A lot of people in poverty give birth to babies. And then their childhood is literally consisting of doing chores and taking care of their own family members. As a child, you're supposed to have fun and you're supposed to play on the ground, play with your body. It's not worry about like, oh, do I have something to eat today or I don't have toys? Clean here and there. Like, what the hell? The birth rate is higher in poverty because people just don't even think about how it's going to affect their child. It's just like... Oh, it's gonna make me happy. Oh, I'm gonna have a cute child. Like, it's all about the person and their weird instincts of doing the deed. Ay, ay, ay. And they just don't think about the future and how it's gonna affect the child. How is it gonna grow up? All of the fun it can experience or even have a child. Who... Then the more educated people are not giving birth because they do recognize these. You need money, a lot of money for a child. The poverty line for Sam's family, with one parent and two kids, is just over a thousand pounds a month after housing costs. But they have to get by on far less than that. I think I'm poor because I get 420 quid a month. Now it goes on what we need and not what we want. We have to spend it on food and electric and gas. And when we run out of electric, the whole house goes. Everything just shuts off. So for battery power stuff and candles. And the gas, when that runs out, the whole house is freezing. You see me running upstairs, getting my candy, which is on my bed. I'm just sitting there going like this. <sighs> If you're going to bring something to this world, at least make them happy. Just have it be sad and miserable because you are happy that you have a child or you wanted it or all these selfish reasons. So yes, now we have the educated people that are not really having children because they do recognize this, which is nice. You need a lot of material things to make a child be healthy and happy and it's important having a child is not 
something that you just do on a whim. You're bringing a life to this world. Like, it's literally a human being just like you. It's not a plaything that you just wanted. And it's a good thing that people who have education recognize all of this, that it's a big, big, big money sink. It's a big money sink. You have to feed your child. Your child should not be working. Your child should not be worrying about things that an adult should worry about or their parents. Of course, because of this, people can't have children. It's not even not wanting them. It's how are you supposed to have them? If you recognize all of this, being financially stable in today's world is rare. I hate when parents tell their kids, we can't afford it, it's not in the budget, stuff like that. Even though, like, you're telling them that because it is true. Like, that is the reality, it's not in the budget, there's not money for that. But I think what that does is it tells the kid to have that scarcity mentality and to believe that things are not within their reach. It might not be available today, it might not be available a year from now, that might be the absolute truth, but you want your kids to believe that they could have it later. All right, this is a little bit of a reach. I'm not saying, like, buy everything for your child all the time. That's insane requirement. It's not gonna happen. And I'm not telling that you should get a PS5 or iPhone, tablet, whatever, for your child. You shouldn't. But not being able to give them toys and having to worry about food is an issue. And giving your child low-quality food is not how it should be at all. This is not a good parent. If you have to buy them low-quality food because you want to save money, that is not how it should be. How are they going to be healthy enough to go to school and their memory is not going to work as good and their schoolwork is just going to be poopier? They need healthy food. Like, this is proven. It's insane that some parents are not able to give them, like, basic healthy food. I understand that you wanted a child, but this is not about you. Spectacular. Give me 14 of them right now. Really? Mm -hmm. Do you know what's in here? I don't care. Don't Shoot. tell me. <sighs> like, for reference, there were times that I had to worry about food, and then it just didn't end great. My body was just getting worse. I started having issues. Being vitamin deficient is not, for a child, it should not happen. I felt shit on a daily, like, and then what is the consequence of this? Your child can't progress in life as well because they can't concentrate. They are having just all around so many issues because of this. Ugh. And then I'm sorry to tell you, but it's also not just about food. It's about clothing and equipment. Your child doesn't have to wear designer clothes, but at least make sure that it's good quality. Otherwise, other children can just pick on the child. Sadly, bullying is way too common in schools over things like this. Also, let's not forget about the price of giving birth. Like, let's see. The cost of my entire stay and C-section was $28,000 before insurance. After insurance, it was $6,000. The cost of labor and delivery was alone $12,000. <laughs> Mine was similar to yours. 27 k or something hospital bill. I paid 4 to 5 k after insurance. Sucks. Jealous of all these, I paid $100 people. Then there is people, of course, who absolutely have money, but can't manage their finances at all. So, at the end of the day, they don't have money for their child. My mom seconds after telling eight-year-old me we don't have enough money to get through the week. 500 <sighs> cigarettes. Then, an another huge problem. People cheat. How are you gonna have a healthy family? How are you gonna have a family? How are you gonna have a child? Anything. If nowadays it's so easy to cheat and people don't really control themselves. It's extremely hard to have a healthy relationship. I'm pretty sure no one wants to be in this kind of situations. The moment that you cheated on your spouse, the impact is on your child. The child essentially feels a sense of a break in their self-esteem. This has been done actually via research that children have lower self-esteem 
when their parents have cheated on their parents, on each other, compared to children who didn't. Why? A child's understanding of the world essentially must stem from their relationship with each of their parents and from their witnessing of the relationship between father and mother. Father and mother gives me a holistic, complete sense of attachment in my life and it will help me navigate around this world. If these two persons whom I'm supposed to lean on and depend on for my survival are cheating on each other, it creates a lot of insecurity. Who am I supposed to be with? Who do I side? And children, when they see one particular parent being very down because of the cheating, they start to step out as an adult and wanting to take care of the parent prematurely. It's not a good thing. Because when they grow up in life, they typically will have some difficulties in a relationship. They overcompensate. Always thinking about well, how can they take care of their partner instead of thinking about their own needs. And then when they do that, they tend to attract people who are more narcissistic. Or on the other hand, they undercompensate, meaning that they are very demanding in the relationship. I want this, you need to do this, you need to do that. That's the impact we have on our children when we cheated on our spouse. So then the problem is this, uh, because I can't stop feeling love for another person. That is true. If you're married to your spouse and you have fallen in love with another person and after serious thinking through, you've decided to let go of your marriage to pursue this relationship, then you've got to be honest about it. It's not that you need to be stuck in this marriage for the rest of your life. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that you need to give honesty to your children. That you will tell your children that you have stopped loving their mother and you still love them, it doesn't change your relationship with your children. That is the best way to still keep their self-esteem while they are growing up intact as much as possible. Well, when we look at these very fun statistics, 30% of dating app users are married, while another 12% are in a relationship. That's wild. <laughs> like, let that sink in. Also, the divorce rates are 50%. How can we expect anyone to have a child in these kind of circumstances or wanting to have a child? And I said, is it bad? And she mm. said, yes. And I said, is that about the marriage? And she said, yes. Drove for about five minutes in silence and then I went to put my hand on her lap and she said, don't. Don't touch me because you won't want to after I've told you what's, what's happened. happened. And I remember that 10 minute drive back home then felt like an eternity. We got into the house, into the kitchen and... I was standing by the kitchen table, hands rested on it. And I said, what's happened? And she said, I've been having an affair mm -hmm. with a man from work. And I remember just tears began to stream. I, d I didn't move completely motionless. Tears began to stream. And then she said, and that's not all. And she said, I'm pregnant <laughs> with this child. And in that moment, I felt like I lost a lot. You know, I'd lost my wife, I'd lost the life we created, I'd lost uh, the dog, our home, her, my parents-in-law, her family, everything that I'd really held dear. If someone said, what makes a meaningful life? I would have described these things. And it felt like they'd just been snatched away, it just came crumbling down like a house of cards. A situation like this can make you feel like you lost years or decades of your life because you found the wrong person and all the time and memories were fake and they went to waste and you didn't know the person. Because how can someone that you know and you thought they love you treat you like this? This respects you in such a way, someone you have a family with. And this is a huge stress nowadays because we are aware of people's tendencies to cheat, be unfaithful, forget the last 20 years of their life because of a fling because of something so meaningless just too many cases of being unfaithful too many we see this all over the media we see this all over ourselves everywhere i i don't think i literally in my whole life ever saw a healthy relationship it's it's very sad and by healthy relationship, I mean IRL. I don't know if I should count these online 
funky relationships when they only record the good things. They do seem nice, but is that even reality? It does make me question, is this even possible anymore? If you have a healthy relationship nowadays, then you're definitely <laughs> like God's favorite or something. <laughs> like, congratulations. It's like you won the lottery at that stage. So please appreciate it. And don't cheat. I'd like to showcase to you what kind of things are going around in the media as well. All these mind games that you have to play and you have to expect that people cheat on you. How can you sleep at night with this kind of mindset that your man is 100% gonna cheat on you or your woman? It always makes you just overthink and not even want to get into the relationship or not even want to deal with this. Being single seems like the happy ending and being married seems like a waste of time. Why are you asking me if all men cheat? Jasmine, Jasmine is asking me if all men cheat. Let me ask you a question, Jasmine. Would you bet your mm. life that all men don't cheat? At some point in any of their relationships. So, for example, you think a man has gone through all his relationships and has never cheated or ever will cheat? A lot of women think that they're special and that their man won't cheat on them. But if they had the opportunity to cheat and you would never know, what do you think they're going to do? You think they're going to say, no, I'm sorry, even though this might be my chance, my last chance in a long, long, long time to get some from someone very different or, you know, pretty or that thinks I'm better than I really am or whatever, or boosting my ego. You don't think they might take them up on it if they don't think you'll never find out? What if you're an old lady? What if you've been married 30 years and you got gray hair and hunched over and they're, you know, they still looking like, you know, tan on a golf course and going to strip clubs. I mean, what are you going to do, ma'am? She's basically saying to absolutely forget about growing old together and Finding a man who is morally acceptable and loyal. Here's why women cheat more than men. Women cheat more than men because they're just better at hiding it than we are. And the thing is, women cheat in different types of phases. When she's cheating on you, it's not when you catch her and another dude sleeping together in your bed. No, she has been texting the dude. She has been flirting with him. She has been giving him eye contact. Those are all stages of cheating that you didn't catch. So she's been cheating way longer than you. She might be flirting with a guy at work, making herself accessible, and you just don't know about it. And by the time you, you realize that she's actually cheating on you, She's already had a full-blown relationship with the dude. And this is why guys be like, damn, how did my girl meet another dude so quickly? It's because she's been putting the seed into this relationship for probably months. They're just better at hiding it. And of course, the next reason is your whole life changes, which is okay for some people, but absolutely not okay for others. Your body changes, your schedule changes, your plans for the future change. Everything will have to change according to the child's need. Which is normal, this is life. But some people are not willing to sacrifice on such things. Especially for women, it's a big risk. So I've been getting hate for my stomach. No, because this is wild. What is wrong with people? Thankfully, these comments don't get to me because I am so proud of my postpartum body. But it does upset me because I feel like if some people are reading the comments and they have their stomach that looks similar to mine after giving birth, then that could really affect them. And that really, really upsets me. But it makes me laugh when I get comments saying her stomach is literally the reason I don't want to have kids. Honestly, the love you have for your child and what you go through to have your child is so worth it to have a stomach that looks like this. This just literally does not matter and is so, so worth it. And I really hope that if you do have that mindset that you don't have kids, because if this isn't worth it for your kids, then I mean, I'm sorry. I would literally do anything for my children. I would take a bullet for my children. It takes a woman's body up to two years to recover from childbirth. We have all been here and we have all like we are all on this earth because someone has given birth to us. Whoever gave birth to you, pretty sure their body looks like this too. And I feel like we need to normalize this because 
Why are we making people feel so ashamed for looking like this after having a child? But postpartum bodies are beautiful, everyone's bodies are beautiful and if you're feeling insecure about your body, I just really, really hope that you learn to love it because you are perfect and beautiful. Indeed. Just the way you are. Bro, what the hell? If she's being trash talked on social media, oh, pff, she's so beautiful. Then what? I'm like Gollum? Or like, what is this? Ay. People are so judgmental. What do they expect after someone giving birth? And even then, this is just too much. The requirement of some people that they have for other people's bodies or even their own. We should all look inside. You should recognize this is not that big of a deal. Women should be chubby, to be fair. Women menstruate. Women literally give birth, okay? Like to... <laughs> a literal new being is being created in their body. A whole soul is what they are carrying under their heart. And we are judging them for stretch marks on their belly and that it's a little bit bigger. Are you kidding me? And what are these mental TikTok comments? Literally just bashing her. Who has this kind of, who has this amount of time that in their day that they just, oh, let me get on TikTok and shit on this woman's body. Just, bruh. <laughs> oh. it's one thing okay you can think whatever just think in your head just think it i don't care but why do you have to write these down why do you have zero life to that point that you write this in a comment like what is this am i reading this right am i the only one who thinks she is just fat when she has all those stretch marks around her belly. And let's say, for God's sake, that she actually is just a little chubby. Who cares? This is normal for women. We don't live on social media. We should not live on TikTok and look at these fake photoshopped pictures and media nonstop. Our minds are completely warped. You should not expect anyone to look like how those Instagram people are. Even they don't look like themselves. They hella edit everything they post. This is brain rot. Literal brain rot. Then this other person. I wouldn't be smiling about it. Literal nightmare. <sighs> Could have gone via seeing a grown woman shake her fat. Are you, are you mental? Are some people just mental? Get a life instead of commenting on a woman's body who just gave birth. Women are already so scared of aging. Everything on the media is influencing us to lose weight and spend money on everything. Makeup, clothing. This is just too much. So much pressure on women to look like a Barbie doll that's not realistic. Mm. Wife is pregnant, you're having an affair with someone else. Why? Because, uh, you know what, I, a pregnant woman and so on. Astaghfirullah. <laughs> Let's say it again, Astaghfirullah. Mm. Yeah, man. I see some men here saying it quite loud, man. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. My brothers, my sisters, face the reality. We have been emotionally trapped at times because of the mobile device. We see things that do not exist. We see people that are not real. We see things that are not the way they are. Let's not forget that during pregnancy, these are common pains. Backache, headache, abdominal pain, run ligament pain, Braxton Hicks contractions, breast pain, heartburn, nausea, constipation, leg cramps, swelling, bleeding arms, cramping, frequent urination, early pregnancy, oh, carpal tunnel, syndrome, dizziness, Hemorrhoids, blah, 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 pregnancy, constipation, ripperine, stained muscle, vision. Okay. <laughs> and after nine months of pain and you trying to go through this, you have people shitting on your body on the internet. Some very happy IRL experiences slash stories. My neighbor broke her hip during giving birth. My other neighbor lost her teeth. I mean, some of them, like four. My mom was absolutely depressed after me. So, risks am I right?
then there is the long-term effects, which I really don't want to go into. But here... Bah. It's insane. Women are absolutely beautiful, and it's amazing what they go through and can go through for another soul in this world to be present. It's amazing. Please, ladies, understand that you are giving a piece of your body and your longevity and your head for this child, which can be worth it. But don't do it with a person that cheats on you, treats you badly. You can see what kind of person he is. If you see qualities that you wouldn't want in your child, stop. Just stop. Why would you continue his bloodline? Literally. So we can have more cheaters and continue this legacy of shit society? Like, just think about it. Please, woman. This is your amazing goddess body that can bring a being to this earth. But it's very special. Do it with a special person. <sighs> I'm saying this because a lot of women can see big red flags in a man and they give birth to their child. And the child will resemble that man their whole life and might have similar acts. And then you also have to be in contact with the father for the rest of your life. Like, do you want this for yourself? Please make this special. <laughs> it's very hard. It's very hard. My ex-husband told me everyone cheats when their wife is pregnant. Anxiety on. When I was about six no. months pregnant, I found out that my husband at the time uh. had cheated on me. This is our first baby, and I had been very, very sick with severe morning sickness. And basically he had gone on a work trip he had to drive through a couple states and he ended up stopping in oregon and at a, like a restaurant or something and he met this woman there and decided to take her back to his hotel and sleep with her and uh didn't tell them didn't tell her that he had a woman who was at pregnant at home you know waiting for him to get home he also went on this work trip where he told me that he was going to go there for like business work stuff like construction was what he was doing um no he was going there to pick weed on his like cousin's farm and his whole family was in on that lie if you want to hear what he said when i confronted him about it how i found out that he was cheating go ahead and leave your comments down below Ugh, please let's look at something cute now because i need some uplifting when your shirt has been hurting you all day so your bf switches mm -hmm. with you <laughs> nice. Gave my boyfriend oh, flowers beautiful. to see his reaction. That is beautiful. Here you go. Did you buy these for Damn. yourself, Lexi? <laughs> I tell you always, you are never allowed to buy flowers for yourself. Not <gasps> awesome, they're for you. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. For me? No one's ever bought me mm. flowers before. Uh -uh. <laughs> Men don't get flowers. You're right. You make a grown man cry. Oh, I gotta tell the world. <laughs> Oh, hey, my girlfriend bought me flowers! What are you talking Yo, I don't think his girlfriend bought her flowers. May 4th, 2023, my girlfriend bought me flowers! Oh my goodness. I'm glad we are ending on a happier note than what we had before. But just please be careful out there. And to be honest, I'm one of those people who won't have a child, most likely. This is just too much for me. But yes, it is what is it.